it, it, it kind of makes us a little bit borderline. Is Dracula real? Was he a real guy? When we're talking about vampires, like where does the mythology around them start? It really happens kind of 1600s, maybe 1700s in Eastern Europe. There just starts to be kind of rumors and folk tales that emerge about people that are coming back from the dead and preying on living in some way. And the stories kind of vary. But then what happens is um, the kind of powers that be start investigating these stories and take it very seriously, and start writing things down, just on a kind of scientific basis, looking into it, because they, they genuinely don't know what is just fairy tale and rumour and what might actually be a dangerous thing that's happening. In, in essence, it gets investigated by the church and by scientists. But then right at that time, you know, printing press, text, writing, all starts to kind of become a bit more popular. And then it kind of leaps from a kind of almost like a tabloid story that's been investigated to something that becomes part of the literary imagination, certainly in kind of uh, Western Europe. People thought that this was a real thing that was happening, and then it kind of just evolved into fictional stories. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would say. Pe or people certainly weren't sure because... Obviously, when we go back that far, whenever something strange happens, people kind of put a story behind it to try and make sense of it, yeah? But what will have happened is if you have somebody, you hear these stories even now about somebody who certainly appears to be dead, but then kind of has a bit of time and then comes back, or or you might have somebody who um, genuinely is dead, but something makes their body move or something and so they can have the appearance of life a dead body can have the appearance of life when we think about like other monster creatures right like frankenstein the wolfman the mummy yeah. do they have that kind of similar origin where like oh is this real or were they always fictional characters and the vampire is different um, well, I would say the werewolf is very similar. So the werewolf and the vampire actually are almost, almost the same figure. The vampire is also associated with the moon. So you think of the werewolf comes to life at the full moon. The, were the vampire also kind of historically comes to life in kind of like the moonlight. And also um, vampires are often very associated, well, with violence, but also with... Um, the animal. So Dracula is, you know, it's the uh, the Dracula. Dracula is always associated with the bat, but he's also like the wolf and the dog and all those different things. So they definitely have a kinship. Um, in terms of the other ones you mentioned, Frankenstein, I would say, is definitely comes from Mary Shelley's novel. So where does like the Vlad the Impaler stuff come in? Is that a later invention, or was that always the basis for it or idea behind it? Yeah, so Vlad the Impaler comes in really with Dracula, right? So um, Bram Stoker spent about seven years doing his research for the book and writing it and making notes and things like that. And when he is doing his research, he goes to Whitby, he um, goes to Scotland and kind of sets up the atmosphere, things like that. And um, there is a kind of... Uh, I guess you could say critical debate as to whether Vlad the Impaler was a direct influence or if, if he had Vlad the Impaler in his mind when he writes Dracula. Some people think, yes, he, he, he was inspired by this figure and that is what creates Dracula. Um, some people say there's no evidence for that. But either way, it's he, he was definitely thinking of um, a kind of powerful lord figure akin to Vlad the Impaler when he's creating the character of Dracula. And so after that, it's kind of, it's kind of like in, in the imagination of, of us all, really, that it, it, it kind of makes us a little bit borderline. Is Dracula real? Was he a real guy? <laughs>